Hi, I'm Narox and this is The Chop, a series where I'll be breaking down beats from legends. Stuff produced by the likes of Jay Dilla, Ninth Wonder, New Javes, Alchemist, and anything recommended that sparks my curiosity. The goal is for me to practice sampling, and maybe you can learn something by observing my practice. Also, I'll try to do my own flip of the sample and share it at the end. We're gonna start this whole mess with the beat Welcome to the Show by Jay Dilla. <laughs> I have the breakdown already done, I did it about a month ago, so this time instead of doing it from scratch I'm just gonna go through the file. The beat is in C minor, and the tempo I have it as 181, but you can divide it by 2 and have it as 90.5, it really doesn't make a lot of difference. JD sampled the song When I Die by Motherload, he chopped 3 loops from the sample. An intro? and two loops. But before we start, I wanted to say that the song is in 3-6, not in the usual 4-8, which means that there are three beats per loop, not the usual four beats per loop. So usually when you have a loop, you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. In this case, you will be counting 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. This makes the process of making the beat a little unorthodox, but nothing too complicated. Now arrangement. He uses the intro chop, then loop 1, then he goes and uses loop 1 plus the first half of loop 2, and using the end of loop 1 to complement the first half of loop 2. Sounds weird, but here's a more visual example of how that looks like on Edison. <laughs> Then he goes, loop 1, loop 1, first half of loop 1, which he fades out while fading in the intro for a switch up. I did the fade in and fade out by automating the volume knob. After that little switch up, he goes, loop 1, loop 1, that thing with loop 1 plus first half of loop 2 plus the end of loop 1. Then finally, loop 2, loop 2, and finishing it off with loop 1, loop 1. And that's how he chopped. Also, I really don't know how he got that ending part. Okay, let me do some low-end theory and some drums. I exported this whole puzzle to create just one audio wave. You can do this by rendering the whole thing together, by putting them on the same mixer and using Alt plus R, or do what I did, which is record the whole thing into Edison and then drag it from Edison to the grid. After exporting from Edison, I duplicated the track and sent them to different mixers. One is for the mid and high frequencies and the other is for the bass. By separating them, I can control the volume and the effect for each part separately. For the mid and high frequencies, I stacked EQs filtering anything below around 300 and 400 Hz. And for the bass, I stacked EQs and did the opposite, filtering anything higher than 300 and 400 Hz. Then I used maximums to boost the lows to my liking. I also made the track mono to keep the bass centered. That way, I can have my drums and bass sitting in the middle while my mid and high melodies are bouncing around. Then I sent them both exclusively to this bus where I mix them together. I used Maximus to boost different parts of the frequency spectrum until I got what I felt was the right balance. Also, I used a bit of reverb, because why not? When listening to the beat, I didn't hear any hi-hats, just a kick and a snare. I won't go over the pattern because you can't just listen to it and emulate it. But what I will mention is that thing about the sample looping in 3 beats instead of 4. 
It was weird for me to match the drums to the sample because I did it with MIDI keys. And I did it without remembering that it was 3-6 and not 4-8. So as you can see, I chopped and moved the pattern to match the sample. If I were to redo this, I would use the Carmack method, which is dragging the sample of the drums and placing it on the grid. I prefer doing that rather than using MIDI notes, especially when I'm working with samples. Last thing is to make sure to level correctly. I want my drums to hit above the sample. So I will have the sample bus hitting around minus 9 dB and the drums hitting 3 decibels above around minus 6 dB. And that is it for the first the chop. I'll try to improve on these, make sure everything is more polished as I go along and I get better with my editing and uh, vocal recording. But yeah, I'm gonna play a little bit of the beat of my remake and then I'll play the version that I made using the same song that he used. But side note is that I did not use the same chop that he used. I used some horns that I found in the middle of the song. Subscribe.